All right, guys, back with an update. Um, so this has been working exceptionally well. Uh, I just, you know, we just kind of got into a bit of a weird spot here, and the worker got a little confused. But that's more, you know, again, just my uh, kind of funky driving in the in the irregular areas. And uh, I'm just very pleased overall with you know how well this is working. The only thing. The only thing I don't like about it, or, you know, the downside to it, I guess, is that I can't bail as fast as I, I normally would, because normally I'd just go, right? And you can't really do that with this guy, because you don't want to get too far ahead of him, or, or he stops. Now, it occurred to me, too, that, especially on a field like like this one, not, not in this little weird area that we're in right now, but I mean on the main field there, it probably would work better to do this the other way around. In other words, let the worker do the mowing, and then I would just follow behind in the baler. But for, you know, these kind of more irregular areas that the worker would have a little trouble in navigating, you know, for cutting, I can do those and then have the worker follow behind me. And, I mean, it does a very good job, a uh, very impressive job, as, as a matter of fact. And, again, the only reason... I stopped is because he just got hung up over there because of the kind of the weird area there. Uh, the good, you know, kind of good thing though about when he does stop like this is it gives me a chance to kind of go back around and kind of clean up some of the spots that were missed. But the nice thing about this is, man, as soon as I'm done cutting the hay, I'm also going to be done bailing the hay for the most part, with you know the exception of some cleanup here and there. Did miss a little strip here, but I've been, I'm, I'm not doing the neatest bailing or, or mowing job that I, you know, normally would do because I've been so focused on, on this, but that's fine. I mean, I'm just, like I said, I'm very pleased with how well it's working overall. Uh, so what I might do on the other fields uh, over on the other side there is, you know, I'll cut a, I'll cut a headland. And then I'll probably swap places and let the worker uh, do the mowing, and I'll and I'll do the baling. The other thing too is I want to put my lizard rake on here because that'll help both me and the worker, you know, pick up the hay a little bit a little bit better. But yeah, I mean I can't complain. This has worked exceptionally well. One thing I have noticed too with these smaller bales is that. I have to get out and, and move them out of the way more because there's just more of them. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. But, I mean, it's still a minor thing compared to the, uh, you know, to the advantage of being able to do things this way. Okay, well, anyway, let's go ahead and finish off this field here. So we'll do a, uh, make sure the lift is down. Um, you know, I think I might be too close. Yeah, because it stopped again. So let me get ahead a little bit. Okay, let's try that. Hmm. Oh, I wonder if this is the problem. It's detecting something around it, which is screwing it up. No? All right. Um, not sure. What's going on here? Well, there it goes. I had to hit it twice. Huh. I wasn't hitting it twice before. Interesting. Okay. Well, if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. All right. So, yeah, I'll get this field finished out in that other little corner and then get the worker set up in the other field, and then I'm going to swap places with it and see how that goes. But, I mean, this worked. This is working great. No complaints at all.
Okay, at this point, I'm going to turn, uh, or I'm going to rather switch places with the worker and let them finish out the baling, they sh or the, the mowing. They should be able to knock the rest of this field out without too much difficulty. And then, of course, I'll just clean up anything that they do miss. Uh, but from here on out, they should be able to handle the vast majority of this. Okay, and then uh, I'll take over the baling. So, yeah, that worked exceedingly well. I mean, way better than I thought it was going to. Uh, that ba basically the baler just follows ex in the exact path as, you know, as as the player as you do. Um, so I did, you know, I did have to kind of think a little bit more about corners and you know where I was going, particularly when they've got the you know the big V rake on because it has a tendency to get hung up, you know, case in point here, but um, it, it's just, it worked so incredibly well. I'm, I'm really, really pleased with how this went. So, all right, guys, well, I'm going to go ahead and um, stop the, the recording here and get uh, things finished up. And then when the hay is completely done, I'll bring you back and uh, we'll go from there. All right, guys, we are just about done. I'm going to let um, our baler buddy finish up these last four windrows. And uh, we are going to get started. We're going to get our, our mower cleaned up. Oh, nuts. And I've got a, I've got all, all the hay from the last cutting that i got to put in storage first. Um... Yeah, we got to get it out of the way because I, I won't have room to to put this. I wished I could just leave it in the field, but the problem with that is that we've got a we got a roll, uh, so we can't leave the bales in the field. Oh, nuts! I missed a piece here too. Okay, I'll grab that later. Yeah, so we can't leave the bales in the field to ferment because we have to roll. Um, if they fermented. If they were completely fermented by the end of the month, that would work, and I could still roll before the month rolled over. But unfortunately, it doesn't. They're, they have to go into the, the next month to, to complete all the way. So, um, yeah, that seems to be the way that it works. So let's get the big end cleaned up and repaired and parked, and then we have um, bales to pick up. I have to remember to to pay extra for the workers that helped me pick up the bales. You know, you know, help me, right? <laughs> I pick up the bales on field 71. I, I should have paid them last month, but I forgot to do that. So we'll just pay them this month. Okay, so that gets this cleaned up. Whoops. No, that's not what I want to do. Okay. Now, let's drop you here, and we'll repair the big M, thirteen hundred bucks, not too bad. And then we'll park, park it. Our beloved big M, and I love this machine. Oh, put us right in the boards. Uh, okay, so let's run over to. You know what? I'm just gonna teleport. Sometimes. I just teleport and screw it, you know? <laughs> Here we go. Um, oh, I left my lights on. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to use this method to pick these up. And again, we'll just pay, pay a little extra to our workers. Now, I know it's a little bit har harder to swallow unload side left yeah that they would pick these bigger ones up but the smaller ones it's a little more realistic you know that they could pick those up I think and since it looks like we're gonna start working with the smaller ones moving forward then it becomes a non-issue but yeah the, you can only get um, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 
either 16 or 18 of the of the larger bales on this trailer whereas you can get 40 of the small ones it's like a huge difference okay and then we'll just pick these back up and throw them down again oh we're gonna have to back up just a little bit that should work okay yeah so that doesn't work too bad doing it that way I have to kind of figure out how how much I should pay the workers for helping with this. I was kind of doing like 250 bucks a session last time, but I mean, what actually constitutes a session, you know? <laughs> so I don't know. I don't. Maybe what we could do is we could uh, we could pay him like 50 bucks a load. Yeah, I don't know. What do you guys... Let me know what you think in the comments. Is $50 a load? In other words, when this trailer's fully loaded, that's $50. Bucks. Um, and so, you know, if it takes 10 loads, that's $500 kind of thing. So, that sounds probably fairly reasonable, I think. All right. Did you get everything or did you miss any spots? Looks like you got everything. Well done, worker. Well, actually, hold on. There is... There is... Was that one spot that we saw earlier? Oh. Over here. And there might be something up there, too. I'll have to go look. Sometimes it can be hard to tell what the... The green tire tracks... Which is actually from the dirt mod, by the way. Um, wasn't there like a little pile up here that we missed? Yeah, it's right here. A very little pile. Ah, uh, yeah, they did miss a little bit up here. So we'll... Grab this. Yeah, this rake is amazing too. So between the rake, the fast baler, and follow me, um, that and that's just made working with hay so much easier. And I, you know, I, I was thinking about something too. Some people might think this is a little OP or a little cheaty, but it really isn't if you compare it to real life. Because in real life, you would have human workers who would be intelligent enough to be able to do all this stuff without you know without you having to babysit them every step of the way you know maybe the exception of someone who was a super super green greenhorn but even that even then you know they'd learn and eventually know how to do it oh there's a spot over here too so by adding to this stuff you kind of compensate for that a little bit i mean you don't fully compensate for it obviously but I just don't, myself, I don't view it as as overpowered at all. I think it helps make it a little more realistic. And even at that, it still isn't, like I said, not 100% realistic. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty pleased. Let's just fold that all the way up. That uh, I discovered this combination. When I say I discovered it, I mean I discovered it for myself. I'm not saying I'm, <laughs> I'm the first one that figured out how to do all this. I'm, other people have too, but for me, you know, so it's really cool. Okay, we are done with the Vicon Baylor. Since it is on lease, we might as well return it right now. We don't have to wash it or refuel or anything like that because we didn't borrow it from any farmers or anything. Uh, so let's get rid of this. And we are going to buy this. If it does not come up for sale buy our next hay cutting our first hay cutting in march then i'm just going to flat out buy it that's just no two ways about it it's just too useful now again there you know there is a downside to this these smaller bales and that is they just get in the way like crazy <laughs> so i have to jump out and move them out of the way and stuff you know but 
It is what it is. Can't have your cake and eat it too, I suppose. And these bales too, like I said, I mean, it's a little more realistic that, that, a, that a person could actually move them. You could, you could easily, well, I don't know if eas easily, but you could definitely roll them. Now, you're not going to be able to pick them up and, you know, uh, military press them over your head, but you could certainly roll them. All right, let's do a little repair here. New Holland, wow, look at that, 2400 bucks. But it it did work, man. Rake, 35 bucks. New Holland did work. Okay, so we'll park this. And I think, yeah, I think we're good. I think all we have to do is just pick up uh, or load up the, the old bales and then bring the new bales over to the staging area and let them ferment. And we got it. We got it covered. Okay, guys, so I think we're going to wrap up the episode here. I'm, I'm just going to, you guys have seen Cotton Harvest before, um, so I'm basically just going to take... Uh, well, hold on. No, I'm not going to wrap up the episode. I'm going to cut the camera and finish out November and bring you back for the end of November and we'll wrap up the episode there. But yeah, I'm just going to take this uh, over to this field. This is just right here, 42, and knock that out uh, real quick. And, you know, I, I estimate we'll make probably about four to five grand off of that, uh, all told. That's what the cotton sold. I'll get the bales situated. We'll go to November 3rd. Uh, well, no, I got to feed the cows too, so I'll take care of that. We'll go to November 3rd, and then I'll bring you back at November 3rd for end of the month stuff, and then we'll wrap up the episode. Okay, so I'll see you uh, in a few days. All right, guys, we are back. It's November 3rd, and uh, we have a, a slurry tanker that has come up for sale. This thing's normally, well, it's... It's like normally $150,000. Um, and it's, um, it's a 30,000 liter tanker. And I'm just thinking maybe we ought to think about getting it. Now we can pay cash for it. We want to take out a loan for the bank. And we have, we have 108,000 liters of slurry so far that we've stored up. And what that basically means is we can use it to fertilize uh, whether any new fields we buy or uh, for contracts. Um, I wouldn't use it to fertilize our grass fields because we can just roll those, which I, I do need to do before I leave November. So I don't know. I, I got to think about that for a little bit. I gotta think about that for a little bit, but anyways, it's uh, November the third, so we are gonna sell our eggs before we wrap up this episode, and also take a look at our finances. So let's go ahead and uh, we want the curtain cider, yeah, because I still have some bales. Yeah, I still have some bales on the um, the flatbed. You know what we might be able to do though is actually here. Hold on. Let's try this. Let's get in our pickup. Um, yeah, let's get in our pickup truck. We might be able to get... Um, go in reverse. Come on, man. What did I just do? There we go. What was I saying? We might be able to get what? Oh, yeah. We might be able to get all the eggs on the flatbed trailer. So let's just try that and see what happens. We definitely will need the curtain side reefer trailer for, um, for the pallets in January. So we're going to have gobs of those. Up and then, yeah, 
and the wires don't actually hook up on this one either so you know the funny thing is though is that the lights are on so it's like I think it registers in the game that they're hooked up even though visibly they're not okay so let's pick up these eggs here Two full pallets, nice. Try not to break them. <laughs> then we'll go over and grab the rest of the eggs out of our warehouse. I got uh, about $4,500 all in total for the cotton harvest, but then the field came up again for cultivating for another $2,800. So, we didn't do too bad. Okay, so you stay there, and we want to grab our eggs. We have 26,000 liters, um, and we want to set them to storing. It's dark this morning. That is a lot of eggs, man. Are we going to be able to get them all on here? I think so. Bring us in a little bit of cash. Uh, that should be it. Well, there's 839 liters left in there, but that's not a full pallet's worth. So, okay, I believe Johnson's Market is given the best price on eggs. Yeah, 14.06, and this is the best time to sell them here in November. Um, 1406 at Johnson's. So, yeah, let's head on up to Johnson's. Okay, let's see what we get. $39,388. Almost 40000 Nice. We'll take it. Okay, so that will, um help finance that slurry tanker because I I think we're gonna get it I think it makes sense for us to, to get that thing because we need one and that's I'm assuming a pretty nice one I mean if it's normally hundred and fifty thousand dollars I mean it's got <laughs> unless those things are just terribly expensive I don't know we can look in the store Let's get back to the ranch first, and we'll take a quick look at that, and then we'll look at our finances, and then we've got to wrap up this episode. Uh, I want to look and see. Do we have... How much milk do we have in the dairy right now? 10,000 liters. Yeah, we don't. I don't think we need to move the milk from the cow barn this month. In fact, I think next month the price of milk goes back up again. Uh, yeah, it goes back up in December and January, so we, I might just leave it in the cow barn and sell, do another sale of it. I think that's what we'll do. Okay. Let's park the pickup. I'm going to have to give this thing a... A wash in here pretty soon okay so let's go into the store and let's go to what is this this is a, a vin vin venus vinus <laughs> and premium integral 30,000 okay so if we go to uh, Probably looking at... Oh, slurry tankers. Okay. Yeah, uh, no, that's the 20,000. There's the 30,000. Oh, wow, that thing's 161,000. It's, it's on the far right side, or towards the right side, which, aside from these modded items, means it's one of the better ones. Um, That one's 32,000 liters. That's a sprayer. 
That was 34,000 liters, the Samson version. So, um, no, not that, this. So yeah, this was 30,000 liters, so it's really not, is at least in terms of its capacity, it's not much less than these two top, top end ones. Um, so does it require a specific type of spreader attachment or can we use any spreader? Like for example, this is a 21 meter Bomec multi profi 2115. Well, that was only 6.2 meters. Nah, we're not interested in that. What about this? That one's 30 meters. That one's seven meters. That one's 36 meters, $125,000. But again, um, I'm, I'm going to assume that even though these are different brands that they can, they'll fit on here and because what else would you do? Right? Yeah. Further to the left, we get the cheaper stuff gets. That's an 18 meter. Um, okay. So just out of curiosity, this one looks like it comes with the sprayer attachment on it, but it's only 18,000 liters. So it's quite a bit less than this other one is. So what we would probably end up having to do, that one's a seven meter, 30 meter and 36 meter. 36 meters is pretty substantial. How much would it cost to lease this? I'm not going to lease it right now, of course, but just out of curiosity. Okay. So it would cost us 6,300 bucks to lease that. Um, okay. What about this one here? 5,300 bucks. So for those months that have a whole mess of fertilizing contracts, we would spend probably more than that in fertil for fertilizer if we did granular than leasing this. And, you know, this could come up for sale too before that time comes because I, I really think we should get this. I think it's a, a good move because we need one. And, yeah, I think we're going to do that. Okay, so let's uh, let's do it. Let's go back to the sales. We're going to buy ourselves. I'm just going to call this a Venus. I don't know if that's exactly how you pronounce it, but that's what we're going to call it. And uh, we'll set up. Yeah, all that stuff's good. I don't care about that so much. It doesn't really matter. So we're getting a 161,000 uh, slurry tanker for $78,000 in change. And it's 24 months old, so it's in, you know, it's not that old. Okay, let's do it. Cool. Yeah. We don't really need any of that stuff. And there it is. Look at that thing, man. It uh, definitely needs some repairs. This is probably going to be expensive. Eh, 3200 bucks. Okay. All right, well, we're halfway there. Now now we just need to get the attachment. I mean, I'd, I'd prefer to buy one. And so, again, hopefully one will come up for sale. But... I don't want one of the little ones. I want something that's, you know, decently wide uh, just because otherwise it's going to take too long to, you know, to do stuff. But it's a nice looking uh, piece of equipment, man. Okay. I have no idea where we're going to put it. <laughs> we'll probably, uh, we'll probably just start putting some of the newer stuff back over there again. Well, actually, you know what? I do have room in the, in the shed over by the cows. Yeah, uh, we have room over there, so that's where we'll put it. But I'm not gonna do that now. We gotta, we gotta wrap this episode up. I'm like super tired, and I still gotta get this thing edited. Okay, let's take a look at our money for the month of November. So we just threw down seventy-eight thousand dollars on that slurry tanker. Uh, we spent seven thousand one hundred twenty-seven dollars on vehicle repair, leasing cost seventy-nine twenty. That was for the the baler, the the fast baler, which we also are gonna buy if it doesn't come up on sale before. Uh, March. 
Uh, property maintenance is five fifty nine. dollars Mysterious $137. We sold, this is from the cotton bale. Uh, I didn't sell any hay, so this is just from the cotton bale from that uh, one contract that we did. Um, we made $39.3,000 from selling our eggs. That's pretty decent money. Water costs. We made $51.45 on contract income. That was just, um, that was the total of both the, the cotton harvesting and the cultivating of that field. And we paid workers $1,900. This is from the train station and uh oh yeah that's from the train station i think because because i put a whole big old load of sugar beets in there yeah that's what that's from okay and then it leaves us with oh actually no we got to pay our workers um so we have to pay the pallet moving worker I'm going to start giving this worker a, a little bit of a bonus, too, at the end of the year. Just because they're doing, you know, extra pallet work. But I'm not going to complicate things and increase this amount. He's just, that's what he gets paid, and then he gets a bonus. Uh, we did a total of 15 trailer loads, I think. Uh, hay trailer loads, and I said I was going to pay 50 bucks a load. But we have two workers. So basically, I figure 100 bucks a load. So 15... Uh, $100 times 15. Yeah, it's 1500 bucks. Oh, that's what I was coming up with, but for whatever reason, I, my brain wasn't thinking right. Uh, I'm going to give them an extra 100 bonus, too, because they did such good work. Okay, so 1700 bucks goes to the workers for helping me load the bales. Um, that is it. All right, guys, so... In December, I don't think anything's going to happen. Uh, December's usually a pretty slow month. We... We're not going to sell any of that stuff. Silage is just slightly better in January, so we're going to wait for that. I'm not planning to sell straw, but I mean, after all, we got a 1.2 million bales of it. We might sell a little bit. The thing is, though, is the best price for that is in December. Hmm. I don't know. I, I probably won't. I think I'm just going to keep it for now because we're using it. I mean, we're not, we're not using a lot of it, but we are using it. Uh, just out of curiosity, manure and slurry both are at their best price in December and January. And we could sell it. I mean, we could top off the greenhouses and then sell the manure and maybe sell half of the slurry. Something to think about. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but otherwise, it, yeah. So if we sell anything at all in December, it'll be straw, some of our straw portion of it. And these are still just a tiny bit better in January. So we, we, would, st we would still wait for January for those if we sell it at all. Okay. So, um, yeah, we're not selling any of our grain. We're hanging on to the sugar beets. Because the plan, the tentative plan is to do a, a sugar factory or a uh, sugar mill, rather. Oh, oh, milk. Yeah, we, d yeah, let's wait till January to sell the milk, too, because it's just going to be a little bit better there. Plus, it'll, it'll build up some more. So, yeah, unless I decide to sell the straw in December, and I'm kind of thinking I won't, Um, I want to just hang on to it for now. I probably will, I probably won't bring you back until January. Um, but we'll we'll just go through the end of the, the a quick run through of the money at the end of the month December right at the beginning of that episode because there's not really going to be anything to show you <laughs> just the normal monthly stuff. So, all right, guys, that is it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And once again, happy birthday, Dad. Hope you have a wonderful birthday. And uh, we're gonna see you at Christmas time, so that's gonna be fun. Looking forward to that. Um, we're gonna fly my dad out here for Christmas out to Colorado, so it's gonna be great times. Uh, but anyway, that's it. I gotta go to bed. After I edit this video, see you guys later. Bye-bye.